Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining the channel. Today in the bench we have a Denon. It's a DCD 695 CD player. And I'm told it has a problem with the tray opening or closing. Uh, let's try it out. Power is on. Everything looks good. Open it up. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it's doing the Watuzi. So you're probably wondering what what would cause that? Well, actually, there's a little switch uh, in the in the CD drive mechanism that tells the microprocessor or the microcontroller when the tray is open or closed, and that switch sometimes gets oxidized and dirty and uh, doesn't give the right signal back. So it kind of confuses the microcontroller into thinking that the tray is closed or when it's open or when it's open when it's closed. So let's try this. Let's see if it... Okay, it's playing normally. Everything's good. We just need to go in and clean that switch. Okay. So, yeah, I can see why that would be annoying after a while. Okay, all right, so we're inside. Here it is. Pretty nice layout, pretty simple. This here is all your power supply. And uh, this is your... Uh, DAC down here. You got PCM 61 P's from Bur Brown Burroughs, Burroughs Brown. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. I'm going to check a few of these. It looks like it's getting a little cooked around here. But that's okay. We're not looking at that right now. We're looking at this. This mechanism here and the switch. Now it's probably this cable here that goes to the front. And then it comes back to this board. There's another cable here that goes to the optical block. And this one goes to the optical block as well. So we're going to need to remove the uh, CD drive mechanism. And I think I might have to take... I know I have to take the door off. I don't know if I have to take the front panel off. We'll see. Let me see. Let me get the tray in the out, out, uh, in the out position and then we'll start working on it. All right, so I got the tray out. We have to take this front door off. So you just pull on the bottom, pull it forward towards you, and then lift at the same time, and it slides up. You know, to put it on, you just from the top slide it down, click it on. So let's take this off for now. Push the tray in, and now I can t disconnect. these cables and then I remove four screws For these uh, CD decks of this age, to the switches start to get old and oxidized, and they start malfunctioning, they don't make the perfect connection like they're supposed to. aside. All right. So, as usual, check for crack solders on these connectors. This one here and the one that connects to the motherboard. If you have a crack connection, it'll simulate a bad switch. So, that's one something you want to look for. So, I think 
our switch is right here. This is our motor, our tree motor connection, and this is our switch. So he's got one screw and three clips. I'm just going to leave the tray in the half open position for now. And I'll take the screw out. I don't know what this spring here is for, but I'm going to take a pair of what this spring is for. for holding something. Let's pop this off. There we go. And there's our mold switch. It looks like it sits in this little uh, sits in this position and then this thing here this when the door, when the tray is closed, this is what activates the switch, right? And then I bet if they pull it fully open, uh, there should be another one. Oh yeah, there it is. No. This thing slides over inside to push it that way to tell it's open. So we obviously got something in this switch that's not behaving. Let's uh, spray it with some... Uh, before we do anything, there's only three connections here. Let's try an ohm meter on this. Kind of works. Yeah, it's not doing very good. Let's put some contact cleaner in there. Let's see if we can get this thing to work again. Today I'm going to use Neutral 401B. This has a uh, light lubricant in it and it's for cleaning switches and controls. I'm just going to spray some in. If I can get uh, the straw to go out. Okay. Work it, baby. same old story silver plated contacts over time they oxidize and turn black and they don't connect anymore and you got to spray some stuff in and wipe the wipe the contacts like this get them to wipe it against each other Test this again. Okay, so this one and this one. with these little probes. It's 
it's working. I don't know if it's working better or not. You really can't disassemble these because the uh, they have a push on nut plastic on on plastic post. And if you tear that nut off, it'll rip the post off as well, and then you'll never get it to stay together again. So. I'll give it another clean. Give it another shot. And give it a shot of deoxid, I think would be the best. Maybe it's a little bit. We get some deoxid in there. I'm using the 100% stuff. Red formula. Now, if I can figure out, there's no hole back there. I'm just going to drizzle it in here and hope capillary action takes care of the rest. Alright, it's the best we can do for what we have. position. There we go. And the screw, I don't know what it does. this back in and give it a test. Some of these caps here are in an area where it's getting kind of roasted. There's a zener diode here and a transistor, a couple diodes and they seem to be packing out a lot of heat. I'm just going to check some of these. This is a 50 volt at 100 microfarad. Should be somewhere around 300 milliohms. Let's see what this one says. It's about 900 milliohms, it's no good. This one here is 47 micro at 63 volts. I don't know why they need such high voltage capacitors. 47 at 63 should be around half an ohm. And we got 1.2 ohms, that's not good. What is this, this one here? This is a 33 at 35. Both of them, 33 at 35 should be Oh, probably down around one ohm or less. And what do we got here? 1.2, 1.2. So those, those two, I'd probably replace all four of these. I think I will. I just want to take a look at this one over here by itself. It's by a transistor. 4.8. What is this thing? Well, that's a one microfarad. Okay, that's good. I'll check a few other ones. 0.32, that's good. Point two three. It's looking better. 
0.3. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pull the main board and replace these four. I'm going to test these two as well. And if they're bad, they're going to get changed out. So just a little bit of preventive maintenance here for this guy. Let's make sure his CD player lasts, lasts longer than it should. All right, what I did is I reflowed these two, these four joints. Three of them are, three of the, these four were, were cracked. And this is the output RCA jacks. These typically crack because you get stress. And uh, when you're plugging it in, pulling it, pulling the thing off, it stresses the connections and they crack. So that's reflowed. And I reflowed this one as well, it was cracked. Uh, aside from that, everything's good. What I did is I replaced five caps. One, two, three, four, five. And then this one tested fine, so I left it alone. Um, still need to check a few things. I went through and looked for crack solders, didn't see anything. Let me see here. I might resolder these two transistors. They're kind of, there's another transistor up here. Yeah, I'll just re-solder all three of those transistors as well. Then board clean and then reinstall. So while I have it apart, what I did is I went underneath and turned the gear to move the optical block out so I can see the lens. And it's quite dirty. You can see it's got, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's got like a layer of dust and film on it. So I'm just going to take a dry cotton swab and just give it a little dusting. And you can see it's coming back. It's starting to shine now. Eh? Don't spray anything on these lenses. Okay, I think that is good. Let's just inspect it. Looks really good. If you have the compressed air in a can, you can spray a little bit there, but don't go, don't go crazy on this because it's kind of a delicate mechanism. Just got to give it a dusting with a cotton swab and that's all is good. Okay. Everything's back together, plugged in. Uh, let's try it. All right, so this thing draws like 2.7 watts, even when it's not turned on, it's plugged in. So the power goes straight to the power transformer. And then from there, the, the switch is on the secondary side, just so you're wondering. So I turn it on, power consumption goes up to about seven, seven watts. Let's put our little door back on. CD happening. It's working good. Okay, so we can get this wrapped up and sent back to the owner. And this door tray is not freaking out anymore. Let's just test it a few more times here. Everything's good. Good. Ready to go. All right, that's it for this one. It's going back to the client and I'm sure he'll be happy with it. So I'll give it a little bit of a clean and then uh, give it back to him. So that's it for this one. Short, short video today. So that's all I got. Sorry. I'll make a longer one next time. How's that? All right. Take care. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next one.